Welcome to eHealth Radio. I'm Linda DeWitt. Joining me is Kimball Richardson, a licensed mental health counselor at Community Health Network. Our topic is Zero Suicides in Healthcare, a national initiative detailing best practices for the treatment of depression and suicide prevention. Kimball, tell us more about the initiative. What does Zero Suicides in Healthcare mean? Well, it means a really uh, a culture switch to understanding that every patient and every person really needs to have a pathway to appropriate care. And we want to be um, one of those providers of that pathway. Now, are we talking about, when we talk about suicides for this initiative, are we talking about people that work in healthcare and suicides among that population, or are we talking about the general population? We're talking about the general population. Well, I mean, frankly, we're talking about anyone. Uh-huh. But but in general, no suicides in healthcare means that healthcare providers or behavioral healthcare providers in particular are trying to create a culture of every patient under our care needs assertive treatment, and we can help with that. Okay. Now, if you look at statistics, suicide is the leading cause of death among 10 to 14-year-olds and the second leading cause of death among 15 to 34-year-olds. We know this impacts everybody sure. of all ages. Who is at risk for suicide in particular? Well, in particular, the, the folks that we see generally have some sort of a diagnosis of depression or it could be an alcohol or drug uh, issue. But uh, folks that have several uh, layers of concerns that might be a job stress, divorce, um, life stress in general, accompanied by a potential alcohol or drug diagnosis or depression, something like that, we would really want to pay attention to. And any other mental health illnesses? Well, there are some other mental health illnesses that we certainly want to look at, like bipolar disorder, which also has a depression component to it. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. What are some of the signs and symptoms to watch out for for somebody who might be potentially looking to commit suicide? What what could a bystander look out for? Well, um, some obvious symptoms would be someone who is agitated and appears to be depressed. I mean, and sometimes for, you know, for most people, an obvious sign was someone who's crying or looks really down, uh, appears unkempt sometimes because people don't care about their hygiene, uh, sometimes when they're severely depressed, but also somebody who is uh, not concentrating well, not sleeping well. And again, if we want to throw in sometimes alcohol and drug use, really increases people's risk about 50%. Who is best to intervene in a crisis situation? That's a really good question because that really is one of the things that we're trying to do is to broaden that definition. And really, um, clinicians and non-clinicians alike in our healthcare system can intervene with someone who's having thoughts of suicide. So we do want to offer some training, of course, but you don't have to be a master's or doctoral level or a physician uh, trained uh, professional to intervene. And what are some of the typical things that a health professional may do to intervene? Well, <laughs> frankly, the first thing is to ask, are you having thoughts of suicide? And that sounds simple, but for many people, those are hard words to say out loud. And sometimes people don't want to be intrusive or bother someone or even upset someone. Uh, and, and we find that it's just the opposite. It can help to create a dialogue and conversation. What is Community Health Network doing to implement a systems-wide approach to suicide prevention? We're joining the national effort called Zero Suicides in Healthcare, and uh, we're, we're implementing – well, we already have evidence-based practices, but we're putting some other specific things into place and being more aggressive and assertive with uh, aftercare follow-up and, um, and identifying some of our uh, clients that are at more risk. So intervention is key. And I know a lot of people will say after the fact, well, gosh, we never knew something right. was wrong. And, and they wish that they would have known signs to look for. What, would, what kind of advice would you give people like that? That it's okay to ask. That it's, it doesn't make people think about suicide if you ask about it. Uh, or it will, certainly will not cause somebody to try to act on it. So you want to ask, are you having thoughts of suicide? You want to persuade someone to get help and then have some kind of plan of action how to get that person or show them the right way or the appropriate pathway to get help. Kimball Richardson is a licensed mental health counselor at Community Health Network. For more information about behavioral health services at Community and resources available, including a crisis hotline, visit ecommunity.com backslash behavioral health. 
You're listening to eHealth Radio at Community Health Network.